Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video we have a relaxing paint with me video of this variegated leaf. If you are curious about any of the materials that I use, please check the description box down below where I will also have the colors I'm working from in my M. Graham watercolor palette. If you like this video and you would like to see a real-time video tutorial, I have a brand new Patreon page listed down below. There I will have a full tutorial as well as my reference image, my own line drawing for you to use, color mixing guides for the colors used in this painting, as well as my own tips, tricks, and techniques for how I completed this painting. Now as we get started with this painting, you can see all of the individual sections within the leaf, and for those I really wanted to go through and start color blocking each of those based on the colors in my reference image. I'm using a lot of different colors, mainly my sap green, and I'm kind of mixing those to the colors that I need and I see within each leaf segment. Each segment is going to be slightly varied in the colors that are in it, so you'll see that I start in one section and I add a concentrated bit of color and then I flick it out or dilute it towards the opposite end of that section. Each of these are slightly different and will have a different intensity in the sap green that I'm using. So I do use different colors like my Hansa yellow, a quinacridone gold, or in some cases I also use a deep sap green from Daniel Smith. For segments that are really deep, I have my maroon perylene or other reds that I will mix into it to really intensify that color. And you can see that I really just go from section to section, adding my color and either flicking it outwards or diluting or transitioning it into another color. Not all segments are completely evenly done, so you'll see that I start with some darker greens and will go into a lighter green or a more yellow green, depending on what the segment will call for. And I'm using a very small brush. Uh, it's a size one and it's a really good pointed tip round brush. I also like the synthetic brush because it allows me to paint complete sections, hold a lot of paint within the brush, and also hold the shape as I'm going through and I'm flicking out the color. And you can really see as I'm going through and I'm painting more of these sections how I'm doing a lot of wet on wet to get that color variation within each of these segments. After each section dries, I do go in and I want to deepen up some of the sections. And this is where you'll see that I'm adding darker color and I'm also allowing more texture to show through with my brush strokes. If you watched the Draw With Me video, you could see that I added some really tiny marks to show the, the flow of the leaf. In leaves like this, there's not really a distinct veining pattern in it, but there is a really light flow that you'll see in the leaf that shows a, a veining pattern without actually being veins. Um, I'm not the greatest plant person, so I'm not exactly sure how to explain it, but you do see this kind of curvature in um, in the leaf shape, and you can see that there are there is a shape that you follow in it. So I did put that in really loosely, and I'm following that as I'm painting along. And what I'm paying attention to is the dips and shadows within the leaf, so I am making sure to make certain areas is darker as I'm going in to help really show um, the variation within not only the shadows of these individual sections but also the shape of the leaf and the variation you have within the patterning of it. With these really pale sections I am using a bit of green and some buff titanium um, so I'm not working from a strict from a strict M. Graham palette and for the outer part of this leaf, um, I did want it to be a little bit of like a peachy pink. I leaned a little bit more pink than the um, reference image showed, but I really liked the contrast of it. Uh, I thought having just kind of a flat beige wouldn't look as nice in the finished product. And if you look at other reference images of leaves like this, they do have a little bit of a pink tint, so I liked it and didn't find any harm in kind of straying from my reference image. I'm still following the light veining curve to my painting and I'm making sure to add texture where it is and where it's needed and by changing the color slightly I didn't feel as though it would really compromise the image. And as I'm going through you can see that I'm just working really methodically from section to section. Uh, since this does have a lot of texture to it, I wanted to really put down my paint strokes and allow that texture to show up by using my paint brushes. I wanted that flicking texture to show through as well as the texture of the leaf and I really didn't want to compromise that by working wet into wet. Um, I want to work wet into dry and I want those sections to dry completely as I add the glazes of my paint mixtures. And I am varying these a little bit. Um, I'm adding different colors as like I said before, each section is a little bit different. They're all a little bit special and I really wanted to 
show a lot of gradation within these. And as I get to the outside of the leaf, I am sticking with that really nice kind of peachy pink color and being really careful not to overdo it uh, since my mixture would be really easy to go too far into a red color. Um, I really wanted to be careful and if you are new to color mixing, I would say just to make sure that you take the the swatches that you have and just swatch them out on a separate piece of paper before before putting them onto your painting. And I am doing the same thing. I'm doing that flicking motion and I'm making sure to follow that really kind of steep um, V curve that is within the leaf. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about how I decided on that shape and how I followed it and different things that I have, like I said, you can check out that video that I have linked down below. For each of the segments, I really wanted to go through and show a lot of variation. So even the ones that are really light, um, I did go through and show a good bit of texture to it, um, making sure to try to stay within that same kind of color family and reference the image that I have. And you'll see that as I'm working, I'm changing up my brushes that I'm using. I started with a slightly larger brush in number one, and I worked my way down to a 3-0 spotter, and now I'm all the way down to a 10-0 as I'm working into uh, the really tiny sections of my leaf, and I'm working on smaller areas of texture and smaller lines within the leaf. I'm also going through and defining some of the sections that I have to make sure that they look really nice and crisp and clean. Um, while also keeping uh, those little brush strokes uh, areas visible. And that is the final painting. I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you had a lot of fun watching this video. If you did, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up or left a comment down below to let me know your thoughts on it. I hope you are all having a wonderful day and I will see you next week. Bye!